She's setting up. What do you do? What do you get when you cross a circus stunt girl, a Guinness World Record holder, and a magician? I don't know, but maybe our next act can show us. Carissa Hendricks, everybody, a round of applause. sworn to secrecy. Don't tell anyone how fabulous my ass is. Just don't. That's a secret for the magicians only. Oh my goodness. You guys, yes, I am a magician and uh, and I've noticed over, over the years that uh, basically we get asked like the same 10 questions over and over again. And the first of those questions is how'd you get into magic? That seems to be what people want to know. That's what everybody wants to know, right? No matter where I go in the whole world, no matter where I'm performing, eventually someone asks me, how I got into magic. How did you get into magic? Thank you! <laughs> Ten points for that guy. Someone's paying attention. I actually do that joke to make sure everyone's paying attention and, and to see how drunk the room is, and uh, you failed. <laughs> or what? <laughs> or one, depending on who's keeping score. <laughs> Excellent. Um, actually, uh, so, so uh, I'm suspicious of that question, actually, because I don't really think it's a question. I think it's more of a statement. Because they don't say, how'd you get into magic? They say, How'd you get into magic? There's a tone. You know, I can, I, I can read it. I can read the body language. I think what they're really asking is, Oh, you seemed normal. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, and that's cool. That's cool because just like any other poorly adjusted adult, um, you know, I can blame everything on my childhood. And uh, so I'll tell you that story right now. Do you guys want to hear it? <laughs> well, excellent. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, this is a little wobbly. That's, that won't negatively impact the act. All right, that's fine. Um, when I was a kid, I was really into magic, and I mean really into magic, with the fervor and excitement that children usually say for like candy or Pokemon. I was really, really into magic, I was. But here's the thing, I was young, and so I couldn't draw any distinctions between the types of magic I was seeing on my television. So for a long time, I believed equally in the magic of David Copperfield, Mickey Mouse, and Doctor Who. <laughs> Uh, get the nerd vote in the room. Perfect. It's no pandering. I'm not pandering. What are you? You're pandering. Shut up. <laughs> it's the truth. Because I was young and I didn't know at the time that real magic, what I'm doing here, this is just a combination of sleight of hand, special props, and showmanship. That's it. I thought that magic was something that came from deep inside. I thought it was real. I thought if I could focus, which is something that's really hard for a five-year-old girl, then magic could happen. Idiot, right? Totally freaking idiot. <laughs> and even if I did know about real magic, it wouldn't have mattered because we were pretty poor and so I didn't have the money to buy magic props or anything. I would have had to make magic out of the things that were lying around my house. And there were always two things that you could guarantee to find in my house, and those were whiskey bottles <laughs> and empty glasses. <laughs> Those are laughs of recognition. <laughs> My people. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to use this iced tea. Thanks for the single clap there. That's <laughs> we can talk after the show <laughs> about our damage. Um, we're actually going to use the magic of theater to pretend this iced tea is whiskey because I like to set a good example. <laughs> So we're all going to sit here and use the magic of theater to pretend that this iced tea is whiskey. Just like when I was a kid, I pretended the whiskey was iced tea. <laughs> More recognition. Okay. All right. So when I got started in magic, when I was really, really little, when I was like a little girl, I remember being obsessed with the idea of disappearance. Six perverts in the room have the wrong idea. No, that's not what I mean. I mean like vegetables. <laughs> this is where they're sitting apparently, right? Hi. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. What I 
mean is like vegetables and homework and little brothers just gone. That's what I could imagine. And I learned something. I learned that I could make any liquid in any glass disappear with the right combination of handling and counting. Do you believe me? No. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> well, my dad's here. That's good. <laughs> no. We've never believed in you, and we don't now. <laughs> Thanks. If I just hold it on the bottom like this and hold it over the top, and I count to three, I can make the liquid in the glass disappear. You guys ready? Yeah. Woo. One. Two. Three. What do you want? I was five. <laughs> a couple years later, I got a little bit more into magic, and I became obsessed with a different type of magic. I became obsessed with transformation, the idea of turning one thing into something else. And so what I would do is I would watch these magic specials, you know, like from the 90s. You remember those things? You know, cheesy but cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. Woo. <laughs> Want some whiskey? <laughs> and and I, would, I would imagine, I would see them on TV, I'd see them cover up objects so that they couldn't access them. They could add an air of mystery. And so I'd grab a couple objects in my house, just things that we had lying around, and I would cover them up. And then I would say to myself, what do I want more than anything else in the world? Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. And just like that, they would transform into beautiful dishes of ice cream sundaes. <laughs> they did. They totally did. But wait, there's more. Just like that, they change back. <laughs> what do you want? I was eight. A couple of years later, I really did get into magic, though, when I became obsessed with Doctor Who and the idea of time travel. Because you see, for a young girl, the idea of time travel is almost too exciting. The idea that I could go back in time and change things so that maybe I could have friends, you know, just amazingly exciting. So what I would do is, again, more clapping. Wow, this is good. I'm hitting home over in the middle. Seriously. There's a moment happening here. This is great. So what I would do is I would pick two objects and I would memorize their original locations. Bottle, glass, and then I would switch their positions. Then all I would have to do is take those normal objects, cover up the of uh, up them, and then send them back in time to their original position. Do you guys believe I can do it? You don't, you don't learn, do you? Very slow room. Here we go.
actually just joshing you guys. That's supposed to happen. Because here's the thing. The way it works when you go back in time is that you actually create a separate alternate dimension. A different universe. With another you, another me, and another bottle. And if we don't go into that universe and remove the bottle, then a whole world will grow around it. And that world could be super weird. So we have to take the bottles out. Makes perfect sense, right? Logic. It's great. <laughs> now, as I got more uh, talented and magic to get to the point where I am now, um, I learned that I could actually isolate the individual events during time travel. So for a moment, you would actually see the bottle in the future and the bottle in the past. Nobody cares, really, that's not how it works. We're really obsessed with time travel because we believe, deep down inside, that there's something that different you could have done, or said, or maybe bought, that would have made your life turn out just the way you'd hoped. And so here's, let's, let's, uh, sir, what's your favorite color? Just scream it out. Yellow. Yellow? You're wrong. No, I'm kidding. That's fine. We'll work with yellow. Now, it's, it's, uh, it's a special day today. It's a special day at the plaza. And wouldn't it have been more special, sir, if instead of using a red marker, I had used a yellow one? Well, if you guys remember back in time just a couple moments ago, I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are really great. This is, this is super fun. This is really helping with my self-esteem issues. Thank you so much. This is great. Oh, shit. I just realized we didn't take the extra bottles out on the last turn. Guys, right now, there are universes parallel to ours, and they are growing, and they are weird. Here, let me show you. This is actually cool, because it gives me an opportunity to show you guys what those universes look like. In one universe, a version of me actually did this whole trick with two glasses. And in another universe, where I'm a little bit smarter, I actually used two bottles of whiskey. Twice as much a whiskey. There's another universe where gravity works slightly different, and you actually have to find the bottle somewhere in mid air. You guys are so great. There's a universe, you guys, where I am having the best show of my life. Wow! This is. I'm so excited to be here! Oh my god. Nobody cares about that. It's fine. I get it. That's cool. You guys are whatever. There's another universe, you guys, where I'm having a super shit day. No more whiskey? time travel, I've actually learned something about myself. I've learned that despite the fact that I have these special powers, there's really nothing that I would want to go back and change. Absolutely nothing that I would erase. Except for maybe one thing. I really would have loved that ice cream sundae. <laughs> Okay, 
now I get to clean up after myself. Remember this, good girls clean up after themselves. Nobody got that joke. <laughs> Everyone here is more well adjusted than me. That's normal. <laughs> stand on this podium because you won the Olympics. Oh, a condom just fell out. I won the Olympics? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we're going to make you do that in your high heels because that... Yeah, I, I have to stand on a podium? Uh, no, you don't want to. <laughs> I think I can now self-immolate in the Tibetan mountains because I've seen everything that was wonderful, well done. Okay. <laughs> 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 two honks and a blow. <laughs> hey, right, and she gets a medal. This is quite the show. Quite the show. <laughs> We can help you out. <laughs> All right. While she's cleaning up, is it time for my talent? Time for my talent?